Hello everyone. In this course, we will be looking at the implications of misuse and cybersecurity. And the first topic we'll be covering is computer vulnerability. So let's get started. Now the question is, why should we consider computer vulnerability? Well, when it comes to information systems, they need to be secured from hazards both natural and man-made. But what is an information system? Well, it is basically a system designed to collect, process, store, and distribute information. And since this information is important, there is a few things that we need to secure. For example, the computer system, their data, and the network access to the internet. Since not only do you need to secure your system from being accessed physically, but also from the local area network, even from the internet, which allows a person to access your system remotely. Now, what is computer vulnerability? Well, it can be designed as a weakness or flaw in one or more computer systems or connectivity to computer systems. So either the hardware or the software or both of them may have the weakness or your network connection to other system may not be secure. When this weakness is found, it can be used to gain access and even damage the system or its data. So the fact that the system is exposed to the possibility of theft or damage is its vulnerability. A computer system's vulnerability includes its hardware, which may have a flaw in the design, the software, which may have a bug, data communications, which may not be secure or private, and users who genuinely make mistakes. This brings us now to the classification of vulnerabilities of systems and their data, which can either be external or internal. So let us first look at what are some of the external sources. The first example we have, minimal or no protection of computer systems and their data from natural disasters, for example, floods and other natural phenomena such as hurricanes, earthquakes, and volcanoes. Second, we have the lack of protection from electrical power surges and spikes that could damage computer hardware, software, and stored data files. And third, we have terrorist activities that target buildings or rooms with computer systems, for example, bombings or arsons. So the key point to remember here is that these vulnerabilities are coming from the outside of the computer system. Now let us look at the vulnerabilities that are internal. First, we have errors by employees who overwrite or erase data. For those of you who are familiar with Microsoft Word, if you try to save a document with the same name, it normally asks you if you wish to overwrite the previously named document. And if that document is overwritten, under normal circumstances, it may be impossible to get back that old file. Second, no backup procedures is in place for data files. If you do not make backup of important file to another location, then if the original file is deleted, we have nothing to replace that file with. Third, hardware and software are not kept in locked rooms or passwords not created to access software. So by simply having your system in the open is a vulnerability. Fourth, Internally produced software, known as proprietary software, which may be flawed and may, as a result, damage data. The software developer may not actually resolve all of the bugs in the software, or maybe over time, this specific software develops a bug. Fifth, lack of antivirus programs to scan email attachments for viruses. If we do not have an antivirus to block these viruses, that when we open an email, viruses can be downloaded easily to our computer, thus infecting our system. Six, 
former employees whose passwords and security information have not been removed from the system. If these credentials are not removed promptly by administrators, then they can be used by hackers to get into a system. And lastly, employees who attempt to fraudulently obtain money using the company's name, for example, by receiving payments for non-existent orders. So say for example in a database an employee may enter a fake record that someone made an order and is now making that person pay for an order he did not receive. So this covers the internal sources and I'm sure as you can guess an important point to remember is that these vulnerabilities are usually from the inside of the computer systems. Here we have an image of an external source, a bad or faulty power strip, which can cause power surges, which can damage computer hardware and even the data that has been stored on them. Our next subtopic is threats and security. So the question is, what is the goal of a security threat? Well, a security threat attempts to take advantage of a vulnerability or weakness in a system or its data. It can be a possible danger to one or more computer systems or by extension, a network. So, a security threat is basically a weakness or a flaw in a system. Now, what is computer security? Well, this refers to the protection of hardware and software resources against their accidental or deliberate damage, theft, or corruption in the case of software. What is data security? Well, this is the protection of data against intentional or accidental damage. Now, it is important to note that computer users can represent the greatest threat to a company's computer system security since only authorized persons should have access to the computer system of that organization. Computer networks are structured so that each user has access only to the various programs or data they need for performing their duties. Each user, for example, is provided with a username and password with which they log in to use network resources. So an administrator would design the system so that a user can only access only what he needs to carry out his work thus reducing any risks. Next, we will be looking at two types of damages. First, we will be looking at deliberate damage. And one way is by hacking. Now hacking is the unauthorized access and use of networked or standalone computer system to steal or damage data and programs. So either the hacker wants the data so that he can use it or sell it, or it may be someone who is vengeful towards the company and wants to destroy the data of that company. Deliberate damage can occur when there is a planned attempt to bypass all legitimate access restrictions. This damage usually occurs when security monitoring is not enforced. So a network administrator would set up the system in such a way that it logs the network access to observe when resources are being used, at what time by a user, and what time that user is logging in and logging out. These software access restrictions are all necessary to ensure that the system security is maintained. Now that we know how a person can deliberately damage a system, let us see how they do so accidentally. Now, a computer and its data can be accidentally damaged through genuine errors by computer users, such as overwriting the most recent data or entering incorrect commands. Damages can also occur as a result of viruses transferred from secondary storage devices or by the internet. A good example of this would be a user that has a infected laptop at home he plugs in his secondary storage device, a flash drive, infects the flash drive, and when he gets to work, he plugs that same flash drive into his work computer, thus infecting his work computer. 
So our final subtopic will be data communications. And we'll be looking at the vulnerabilities as data is being transmitted. In this digital age, instead of physically sending information, for example, by a letter, our valuable information is transferred via electronic channels to save time, which is often needed to make vital decisions that depend on the content of the communication. So the speed at which the data is transmitted is very important. However, all electronic transmissions can be intercepted by persons other than the intended receiver. And such efforts may represent deliberate attempts to access sensitive information which can then be misused. This brings us now to a very common term, cyber threats or cyber attacks. So what is a cyber threat? Well, this is an unauthorized attempt to access a system, device, and or its network via the internet. So for example, your computer is in your room in Guyana and a person is all the way in India trying to access your computer over the internet, maybe to either use your computer for something bad or to get the data off of your computer. This is why cybersecurity is so important. Cybersecurity focuses on stopping threats that attempt to access a computer or other systems in a network. It protects the network by maintaining logs on attacks and attempted breaches, monitoring sources of attacks, and protecting against future ones. Here we have an image of a person who can freely use their computer at home while connected to the internet because of cyber security. So in review, a computer system and its data is a valuable resource which a user wants to protect. But at the same time, that system or data can become vulnerable to an attack, which can be stolen or damaged. Therefore, a user would need to ensure that their system and data is protected from such vulnerabilities. This has brought us to the end of the topic, computer vulnerability, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.